I started this collection uh, a couple years ago, and I got all these boards within about three months. And when I'm into something, uh, my mind is just consumed. Well, I started skateboarding in 1976. There were no skate parks around. You get into skateboarding during that time, you end up skating backyard ramps. When I was a kid, I'd say to my parents, I'm not coming home for dinner, you know, because cabs come in to skate the ramp. It was like a myth, you know, around town, because he was the Bones Brigade. I remember the first time I ever seen Steve Caballero. I'd never seen airs that high before. Man, this guy must practice a lot. How is he so good? I think one of the first magazines I saw was uh, Trans World, and it was with Cab. It kind of looks like a fake Yali, but he's coming in. But anyways, that made a big impression on me. Seeing all the pictures in the mag, and just looking at all the tricks he did, his skateboarding abilities were extraordinary. No-handed aerials was just as rad as grabbing your board. It looked like, you know, magic, the board sticking to your feet. Everything happened so quick back then, you know, we were always kind of thinking, like, what can we do next? What can we do next, you know? Those are all my uh, amateur skateboard trophies up there. At that time, to really stand out and to really place high in competition, you'd always have to come to the contest with a new trick. What if I bonk super hard as I'm spinning a full 360? I wonder if it would stay on my feet all the way around. It's not just that he did one, it's how he did it, the style he did it, the, the grace he did it. Cab definitely made the Caballero what it is and he still makes it what it is. I was trying to look for some kind of iconic graphic or image that would rep represent me personally, and because I was born near the dragon, I thought a dragon would be a really cool and neat, iconic figure. I got my first pair of Vans around 1978. I didn't get sponsored by a shoe company until 1988. Vans gave me a call and said, hey, um, we're thinking about sponsoring you as a pro skateboarder and we wanna pay you a monthly salary. And I'm like, really? Let's do this. <laughs> like a chess game. Okay, let's go get Steve Caballero and do a signature shoe with him. And that was the full cab. Yeah, I did a drawing for it, and then when I presented it to Vans, they actually had the shoe kind of like mocked up. Looks just like it, and uh, so we went with it. Well, my name is Catherine Acosta, and I am the official Vans archivist and historian. This is the 1990 catalog, so if we really look at that, the shoe was designed and came to market in late 89 would never credit this as being the first signature pro signature skate shoe as there was already Etnies who had already kind of come to the game just by a minute before. But this is really the first one that really takes off in popularity and not only within skate culture but within pop culture too and sort of its lineage across the decades from this time to now. The shoe came out in 1989 and around 1990 there was a huge change in skateboarding. Vert skateboarding went down. There was no more vert events and a lot of street skate skaters were coming around. I noticed this trend that was happening and the street skaters were cutting the shoe down. If you liked the full Caballero and you were to cut it down mid-size and you had more flexibility in your ankles, that feels pretty good. So there was an actual like skate performance side to it, I think that is the exact reason why it happened. I don't know who started that. Yeah, I don't know who started that. It seems like it has something to do with like SF and EMB, but I, I couldn't, I couldn't really tell you. 
I would say it was like Mike Carroll or Matt Hensley or... I was like, who was the first person to ever cut down shoes? Like the cab or just, just cut down shoes, period. And he's like, me. First person to cut down the cabs was Javante Turner. You want to film? Yes. Javante, I mean, I think had a lot to do with style, especially within our group and in San Francisco. We were on it right away. Just get the razor blade and just, that skateboarding moved into street. It took it and was just like, we want it for what we're doing and we need to cut it down and we, this is it. I tell you, the guys that were a part of that whole cutting down the shoe, the Salmon, now I'm hearing Javante, Mike Carroll's right into that scene. And these guys are like the leaders in street. For me, being a trendy person, I ended up doing that myself. So I started cutting them and I think around the second or third pair, I was like, I was over it. I was like, why don't we just make it like that? 